Hey, good morning. It's Jason again from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Today I wanted to talk to you about spider mites and specifically how to get rid of them, both in indoor and outdoor growing situations. So spider mites are a problem for me because at a certain time of year when I'm cultivating all these roses, I grow lots of roses for sale locally here. Uh, when the weather changes, it gets a little bit drier, it gets a little less humid. What happens is the spider mites come on. And how I can tell is because an otherwise healthy growing rose like this one here has good green leaves on the top, I can pull off one of these lower leaves, which is starting to look a little bit yellowish, a little bit mottled, just unhealthy in general. And if I turn it over, I can see that there is webbing and I can see that there are spider mites on there uh, if I look real close. So I wanted to talk to you about why spider mites are so difficult to handle and particularly I wanted to say that there's a distinction between indoor growing situations and outdoor growing situations. Outdoor growing situation like this I'll deal with a little bit later. Let's talk about inside. Let's go inside and have a look at there's a tent that I put together where I'm doing a trial on growing some rose plants underneath artificial lighting and almost immediately upon going in there I noticed that the spider mite levels went way up. So why is that? Well it's warm, it's dry and the, they have no natural predators in there. So um, spider mites in general are pretty hard to deal with. They're small, they hide behind their webbing on the undersides of leaves, so they're hard to reach with sprays. They reproduce really, really quickly, and they have an egg generation underneath there as well. So if you, even if you wipe out the adults, the eggs will soon hatch. Indoor situation, you have no change in weather that's gonna rescue you. So it's not all of a sudden going to get cooler and wetter outside and suddenly your spider mite populations will drop off and you don't have access to all the same beneficial insects. So when you have this problem inside, either on a grow tent or on your house plants, you kind of have to take it into your own hands. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. So I'm gonna talk about first, spraying, and second of all, beneficial insects. So I'll treat those as two separate categories. So let's say about the spraying. It is less expensive to get into the spraying. Typically you can buy uh, insecticidal soap like this for less than $10 at your local garden center or hardware store, and that gets you going. Uh, so it's not expensive to get started. You can find it locally, it's readily available. Uh, you don't have to order away for it. Um, and when the infestation is severe and you wanna take action right away, you don't wanna have to order beneficials, this is a good way to get going on it. On the downside, it is time consuming to use correctly because you have to reach the undersides of all the leaves where the spider mites can be. Spraying it on can be a little, correctly, can be a little bit difficult. And you do have to do frequent applications to obtain control. Uh, you may even have to rotate products. So uh, as I say, the insecticidal soap is one way to go about it. I'll talk to you about some of the other sprays. Now quickly, the predatory mites have different attributes. The predatory mites are usually a little more expensive to apply to the crop, but they are uh, easy to apply and they offer you good control over a good length of time. So it, it doesn't take as much time from you to apply and you'll usually get good control, but it is a little more expensive. It's not readily available. You'll have to order it in and apply it all at once there. So now as to do with the sprays, what I have this loaded up with is insecticidal soap. That's my first line of defense. Uh, aside from the insecticidal soap, let's talk about uh, which works by attacking the exoskeleton of the, of the um, I guess you're gonna call it the arthropod here. So the, um, the spider mites, if you directly apply it to the adult spider mites, it will dry them out. Like I say, direct application is difficult because you have to reach past all that webbing, you have to apply it pretty heavily and all the way to the undersides of the leaves, but it can be fairly effective at knocking down their populations. A second way you can approach it is by neem oil. And I'll try to list some of these products on my Amazon store so you can see some examples of which products I'm talking about. But neem oil attracts the plant, the pests, both by deterring them and also by interfering with their reproductive patterns. So you'll actually disrupt that egg production uh, in the spider mites so they don't continue to reinfest your plant so quickly. The third one I can recommend, uh, I'm a little he more hesitant about, is actually poison. It's a, a pyrethrum or pyrethrins. And those come from a natural chrysanthemum daisy. So you could call them a natural approach, but they're toxic in their own way and you still have to take caution in applying them to your plants. So what they do is of course they will kill both the adult cycle and the egg cycle if applied uh, fully to the to the undersides of your leaves. So if you rotated through all three of those different spray approaches and uh, did that 
uh, on a rotation of three to four days just to break the life cycle of those uh, spider mites, you can probably obtain fairly good control. And once you've done so, then after that, you'll just have to keep up vigilance. You'll have to keep on checking the undersides of your leaves, checking your plants and see if the spider mites are reappearing. So, you know, it might take three or four applications to begin with to obtain control. And then after that, you just have to do some scouting. So let me show you how to do the application here. And like I say, it's really, really important that you get the undersides of these leaves. So if I'm looking at this one here, I'm going to actually turn the pot and get all the way underneath here and really don't be sparing with this. Hit it with a large amount. You may even get in there and rub the bottom sides of the leaves. Now, obviously this is going to take a long time to do. And if you have a large crop, if you're doing a, a great number of plants, you know, you might not be able to get in there and individually hit the leaves. I forgot a step. And really it's just a basic one, but before you start that, what I would do is I would manually remove some of the worst infected leaves. So if I see ones that are like just crawling with spider mites, the plant's damaged there anyway, it's not gonna be productive tissue. So I'll pull off that tissue there just to get rid of the worst of it and also open up the growth of the plant a little bit so that I have access to the spraying. Okay, quickly, let's talk about the beneficial insects that you can use in this situation. Like I say, usually for these ones here, you have to source them either through your local grow store, your local garden store, local agriculture store, you can order them online. And typically they're not that uh, cheap. So uh, the, I think the cheapest I've seen them online is like 25 or $30. I'm pretty sure they're shipping on top of that. Uh, and that's for uh, a predatory mite called Persimilis. Now Persimilis is a little red mite that goes around and attacks the spider mite eggs and the adults and it reproduces quite quickly, it's voracious, and it has a life cycle itself that will, it will consume everything that's there and then it will probably die out or even, uh, even cannibalize its own population is what I've heard from other people. So uh, it's a, it's a short-term, maybe a two to three week uh, goal to eradication if you've uh, placed the appropriate amount of them in there. And then both the pest and the predator will be gone. Uh, so that's uh, pretty awesome, right? Um, quick, quick working, uh, decent lasting and full eradication. The problem is, of course, there's not a lot of residual there. So just like with after you finished your spray program, you will have to continue to scout and see if you if they're coming back or if there's another source of them coming in. Um, it might be worth, and I only mentioned Persimilis as the mite, it might be worth looking for one called Phalasis. And I'll put the name down here on the screen as well. The reason I say that is because it's good for indoor situations and it's also decent for an outdoor greenhouse situation like this or even outdoors. Uh, they're a little bit more um, generalized, so they will attack your spider mites. They'll also feed on thrips. And if they don't have either of those guys around, they'll feed on pollen, which is pretty awesome for me because I have lots of flowers, lots of pollen. So those, uh, those predatory mites will stick around for a long time in my growing situation and continue to provide benefit for weeks and months to come. In fact, I believe that Phalasis is a native predator here. So it's, it's present in my landscape already, at least in small amounts. So adding a big population into my greenhouse or to an indoor growing situation, fantastic for me. I will say one other thing about them is that, and let's just switch from the indoor approach to the outdoor approach. So I said indoors, you really have to take this into your own hands. Outdoors, I have a general approach to pest control, which is that I do as little as I possibly can, uh, aside from providing uh, plantings to promote those beneficial insects. Uh, if I can handle, if I can have, say, western red cedar in the landscape, that's a good overwintering territory for that phalasis mite that I talked about. And so when the spider mites start to come up in the greenhouse, then the predators will have a way to move in and bring them under control, and they do. In my greenhouse, I usually get a two to three week long hard outbreak of spider mites, and then suddenly, uh, even though the weather is still quite warm, the populations start to diminish. And if I look underneath the leaves, I can see a lot of predated mites. They're kind of wiped out by all of the beneficials, not just those mites, but also um, uh, pirate bugs. I'll see, you know, all sorts of, 
of beneficials and predators coming in there to wipe out those spider mite populations because hey it's easy pickings so that's what i do in my outdoor landscape is i don't really bother with it a whole lot by this time in the year by august my rose sales are down anyway so if i have a little bit of spider mite damage and it damages the foliage i'm not too worried about it I'll let nature take its course. I will make the exception to this only if I see that a plant is distressed or damaged or seriously to the point of death or, or some, some, some way that I don't want to allow the damage to continue, then I will uh, apply the same kinds of countermeasures I would inside, either by putting on insecticidal soap, by applying a pyrethrum uh, product or pyrethrum product, uh, or by putting on neem oil, or by releasing predatory mites. So really I just take that same approach I would use for an indoor grow room, bring it to the outside. All right, I hope that answers some of your questions about spider mites. Uh, you may have some questions about identification or uh, their life cycle or anything else. Please leave those in the bottom of the, uh, of the video under the, in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer those. And thank you so much for watching today.